Hi all, welcome to another video of the subject Cloud System Analysis based on KTU syllabus and uh, we are on module 5 and today uh, we are going to discuss about the economic load dispatch and uh, the equality and inequality constraints okay that is system constraints so as we know the economic load dispatch it is the method of determining most efficient low cost and reliable operation of a power system by dispatching the available electrical generation sources to supply the load on the system that is as per the uh, demand on the load we have to switch on the corresponding generation sources that is if we need uh, uh, if you are having an additional one megawatt load demand then correspondingly okay we have to uh, switch on a generator source okay so it should be uh, correlating with the requirement of the load okay it, yeah, that is if we want if we want an additional one megawatt load we uh, shouldn't switch on a 10 megawatt or 100 megawatt generation sources so okay so like that we have to uh, based on the uh, demand of the load we have to switch on the corresponding uh, generators so the primary objective of economic dispatch is to minimize the total cost of generation <laughs> at the same time maintaining the operational constraints of the available generation resources and the various operational constraints include around the eight constraints are there the first one is system load demand as we all know the load demand is a constraint okay and the downward and upward regulating margin requirement of the system <coughs> okay there, there may be uh, frequent changes in the load okay uh, requirements so uh, an upward movement will be there and downward uh, movement will be there based on the requirement of the load and all okay then the lower and upper economic limits of each generating unit the, for each generating unit there will be a lower and upper limit okay limit of generation and the maximum ramping rate of each generating unit the ramping rate is nothing but an increase or uh, decrease in okay an increase or decrease output per minute of spinning mode okay in spinning mode that is actually the ramping rate so the maximum ramping rate of each generating unit then the units restricted operating zones restricted operating zones then emission allowance of the system then network security constraints we will discuss it later and the supporting multiple input output curves and emission cost curves for different fuels we are using okay that is mainly in thermal uh, power plants and all we will be using different fuels okay so the various operational constraints are uh, these eight points and in that the system constraints the mainly the system constraints are divided into two equality and inequality constraints and the inequality constraint is div again divided into hard type or soft type so basically the hard and soft means the hard type constraints are those uh, which are definite and specific okay which are definite and specific that is example we can say that the, the tapping range of all load tap changer transformer okay and the uh, soft type constraints are those which have some flexibility associated with them okay these constraints are flexible <laughs> so example we can say that the, the nodal voltages and also the phase angle between the nodal voltages are examples of soft type constraints and the equality constraint okay equality constraints are the basic load flow equations okay the basic load flow equation that is pp and qp uh, the corresponding uh, uh, the reactive and uh, active demands the pp and the qp okay these are the equality constraints so in the equation uh, we will uh, learn clearly in the uh, load flow modules okay that is where ep and fp are the real and imaginary components of voltages at the pth node okay then gpq and bpq are the corresponding nodal conductance and susceptance between the pth and the q nodes okay so equality constraints are the basic load flow equations okay and the inequality constraints okay so the inequality constraints are around uh, six types so the first one is generator constraints so uh, the as uh, if you are thinking about the generator the kva loading of the generator okay 
of course the kva loading of generator that is it is equal to root of pp square plus qp square okay, and reactive power okay then the kva loading of the generator okay should not cost a pre-specific value cp because of temperature rise conditions okay <coughs> so the loading uh, should be uh, below okay okay corresponding a particular value that is pp square plus qp square should be less than or equal to cp square okay so if it uh, exceeds that limit the temperature will rise automatically okay abnormally and the, the also the active power active power generation pp okay active power generation pp should lie between pp minimum less than or equal to pp less than or equal to pp max okay so there is a maximum and minimum limit for pp so if pp exceeds greater than pp max okay pp max uh, temperature will rise up normally okay and if pp uh, less than pp minimum the flame in the boiler becomes unstable okay there may be a chance for un uh, unstable in the uh, flame in the boiler that is mainly if you are talking about the thermal power plants okay and also the reactive power generation should lie between qp minimum less than or equal to qp less than or equal to qp max okay <coughs> so if qp is greater than qp max temperature will rise up normally and Q if qp is less than qp minimum the machine will come out of its stability limit okay so these are the generator constraints and next one is the second one is the voltage constraints the voltage magnitudes and phase angles at various nodes should vary within certain limits that is uh, mode vp minimum less than or equal to mode vp less than or equal to vp max mode vp max and also the delta p the angle okay voltage angles angle between the voltages okay that is uh, delta p minimum less than or equal to delta p less than or equal to delta p max where mode vp and delta p are the voltage man and the phase angle at the pth node if mode vp is not within the above limit okay if it is not within the above limit the equipment connected in the system will operate unsatisfactory okay unsatisfactorily so and the proper voltage should be there and delta p should lie between 30 degree and 45 degree okay the angle phase angle okay because of the transient stability reasons okay so that is the second point the voltage constraints and the third inequality constraint is uh, running spare capacity constraint running spare capacity constraints so these constraints are mainly used to meet the forced outages of one or more alternatives on the system okay forced outages of one or more alternatives second one is the uh, the unexpected load on the system okay so the total generation should be so that in addition to meeting load demand okay in addition to meeting these load demands a minimum spare capacity should be available okay so we have to generate an additional uh, power okay to meet this uh, spare capacity okay that is the generation should be greater than or equal to pp plus pso where pp is the load demand and pso is the spare capacity okay additional spare capacity uh, that is if uh, sudden outages okay sudden uh, unexpected load demand is happening okay we have to meet that all for that this spare capacity is using then the fourth one is transformer tap settings that is we know that the tapping range for an auto transformer is zero less than or equal to less than or equal to one <coughs> the maximum value is one because the always the auto transformer is used as a uh, step down transformer okay and for a two winding transformer it is uh, zero less than or equal to t less than or equal to n where n is the ratio of the transformer that is transformation ratio n that is the these are the uh, transformer tap settings then the fifth one is transmission line constraint another inequality constraint is transmission line constraint here the active and reactive power flow through the transmission line is limited by the thermal capability of the circuit so for the thermal capability of the circuit okay maximum thermal capability is <coughs> taking as c max okay so the active and uh, reactive power flow okay should be uh, below a particular limit to limit the uh, that is it should be uh, in between uh, uh, within the thermal capability limit so cp less than or equal to c max where c max is maximum loading capacity of the pth line 
ओके ईथ ट्रांसमिशन लाइन एंड लास्ट इन इक्वालिटी कंस्ट्रेंट इज नेटवर्क सेक्यूरिटी कंस्ट्रेंट सो सपोज इनिशियली सिस्टम इज ऑपरेटिंग सैटिस्फैक्टरली एंड देर इज एन आउटेज ओके इफ देर देर इज एन आउटेज सो दैट आउटेज मे बी ए स्कड्यूलड वन और ए फोर्स्ड वन ओके द आउटेज ओके दैट इज द लॉस ऑफ सप्लाई ओके इट मे बी ए स्कड्यूलड आउटेज और फोर्स्ड वन सो इन दिस केस ए Uh, so this to be made with the outages of one branch at a time and then more than one branches at a time okay so the nature of constraints are same as voltage and transmission line constraints okay so uh, for this case it is natural that some of the constraints will be violated okay <coughs> so <coughs> so for the uh, 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 complex change in the constraints uh, the complex uh, constraints will be uh, make more complex if you are considering a large system to study okay so the network security constraints come under uh, this point and uh, mm, these are the main six inequality constraints i hope all of you understand the constraints well and uh, thank you